Now, with Adobe sending regular updates across all of their apps these days, it can be very easy to miss something or maybe see something and not really give it the attention it deserves. And a prime example of that is remove in Photoshop. So let me just show you what I mean by this, because ordinarily in Photoshop, we've got the remove tool over in the toolbar here, which does a pretty good job. But there have been times I definitely have experienced it, and I've no doubt you have, that when you've used the remove tool to remove something, it seems to add something completely random into the picture. Well, this has been sorted, but let me first of all show you results with the remove tool, and then I'll show you something else. Right, so let's have a look here then. So this picture is me on the right and my friend Brian Lee over on the left. Let's just say that I want to remove me from this picture. I'll use the remove tool from the toolbar and all I'll do is I can use the left and right square bracket key to make the actual uh, size there bigger or smaller. And I'll just quickly trace around the outside of myself just here. I'll include the shadow coming off to the side and a little bit down there maybe, come up the top here onto the arm and then around. It'll join it all together and then straight away it removes it. And from here, it maybe looks good until you zoom in and you can see there's a weird kind of patterning going on. That foliage definitely wouldn't look like that. So that's not really the result I would want. If I dive to this image here, this is my friend Andy Hughes from a recent two day road trip we had in Cornwall. This is my bag that I wanna remove out the picture. Again, I'm gonna use the remove tool and all I will do is simply trace around the outside of the bag, including the straps down here, over to the left and then round, join the two together. It fills it all in and then bang, it goes. And it's kind of okay, but now in fact, you look as I zoom in, very smudgy. That's not the result I would want. And then the last example just to show you for now is this surfer here. And at a place called Trabawi in Cornwall, amazing place. The sea was so rough. This guy just came in front of us and was going to just go out into these waves, but he decided against it. But let's just remove him from the picture. Again, using the remove tool from the left-hand side, I'll trace around the outside of him, include his shadow down here on the top like that, and then it's gone. And that's actually done. That's actually done a pretty good job. So we can't really complain too much about that one, but I'll just backtrack it and then we'll come back to the orig original image. So the thing that I wanted to show you, we've got the remove tool in the toolbar, but now we have something in the contextual taskbar, which you might have missed. Let me just show you. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna go to a selection tool, and I love to use the selection brush tool. I really like using this. Now in the contextual taskbar at the top, you can see just here at the moment, we've just see select subject, remove background, and adjust colors. But what I'll do, let me zoom in just a touch. I will use this selection brush tool to do like I did before. I'm just gonna trace around the outside of me, like so. Again, I'll include the area where my shadow is just there. Come around the bottom bit, maybe just a little bit there. Come up to the side, like so. Bit on the arm, and then come to the top. And it'll fill it all in just like before. Now look, in the contextual taskbar, let me just zoom out so you can see it a bit clearer. Can you see here, look, now we've got the remove button. And this is different technology to the remove tool in the toolbar. Because you'll notice with the remove tool, you go around something, it takes a second or two, and it tries to remove it. This one here does a lot more thinking using the generative AI technology. So it'll take maybe 10, 12 seconds sometimes, but as a rule, it will do a really, really good job. So let me show you now, look. So we we'll zoom in. I've got me and my shadow selected, and I'll just tap on remove. We see the familiar uh, progress bar now moving up here, looks and removing the area. I mean, I mean, wow, look at the difference. Look at the foliage. Now, <laughs> Massive, massive difference. You go from before and after, before and after. Let's dive over to this one here, the one with my bag. Again, I'm gonna use a selection tool. I'll use the selection brush tool, increase the size of it using my right square bracket key, and I'll just trace around the outside just to make sure I can include the straps down here, come around the outside like so, and then join it together. It fills it in, and then I click on remove. Give it a few seconds, can be maybe up to 10 to 12 seconds, something like that, but I mean, what? Look at the difference. Look at the difference. Remember before it was all smudgy? Not smudgy at all. Now with this one here, 
Unlike when we use the generative fill technology, we get variations. So we can go from one, two, or three. And if we want to, we can generate again to get three other variations. You don't get that with this remove button. But all you would simply do, if you weren't happy with that result, is you can just Command Z or Command Z, go back one step to come back to where you've got your selection around the object and then just click on remove again. It'll then try and do another job for you. You see the progress bar a few seconds later, bang, gone. Amazing. But again, look, not smudgy in any way, shape or form. Absolutely outstanding. So let's just go to this last one here, which, you know, the remove tool did do a pretty good job on anyway. But I'll just use the selection brush tool to trace around this crazy dude here, this surfer. And then we'll come to here and then click on remove. It hasn't got that much to compete against because this one was pretty good anyway, but there you go. Look, see, a great job with that one there, matching everything in. You would never know he'd not been there. But let's take it a step further. I want to remove some stuff on this picture here, which if we think back only a short time ago to remove, let's say, my friend Anthony, the guy over here on the right-hand side. Nothing against Anthony. He just happens to be in the place that, let's say, I want to remove him, remove a bit of this bar and this stand behind him. To try to do this up until fairly recently would be quite a task to make it look good. But let's dive into showing you how we can do that. But first, let me just show you this. I want to take a moment to invite you to my masterclass community on the school platform, a welcoming space for people who love photography and retouching images, but who want to gain a deeper understanding of how to create images, develop skills, create with purpose and grow through shared learning with like-minded people. There's an active forum, weekly challenges, a classroom with new courses added each month, live calls, special guests, and planned in-person meetups and workshops. Check out the About page at this link, which is also in the description part of this video. It'd be great to have you join us. All right, so getting back to this picture here then. So first of all, let's just try to see what the Remove tool would do. Okay, the Remove tool, which does a good job in a lot of circumstances, but let's just see what it'll do on here. So I want to remove the bar, remove this bit down here, remove Anthony, let's just come down the side. We'll include the bit of the legs there, the legs, the light stand, his feet, a bit of his shadow, and come up the leg just there. Bit onto me, and he's got his hand on my shoulder just there. And there we go. So let's just see what it does. Give it a few seconds. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not the result we'd want. Okay, so this is kind of what we'd get, you know, f up until fairly recently, and you think, oh, it's just no good at all. And you'd have to revert to maybe something like trying to get content to where I feel to do a really good job or get really good at cloning and healing. But check this out now, look. Instead of that, I'm going to now use the selection brush tool. I could use any selection method, but I love using this one. And what I'll do is I'll do the same thing. Look, I'm going to trace around. We'll include this bar. Top of Anthony's head and down that bit just there, bit of that shadow, side of his head. And I'll trace around the outside, including this area here where we've got the shadow. Onto his feet, this little bit here maybe, come up. And alongside my arm there. And there, and I'll include my hand as well. And that bit just there. So now that's all selected, that's what we're going to remove. I'll come to the contextual taskbar, click on remove. So I'm telling Photoshop, don't fill anything in here, just remove it. Do the best job you possibly can. Roughly 10 to 12 seconds. I mean, come on. And that is <laughs> absolutely insane. Incredible. I mean, yeah, I've got a little bit here maybe I could remove, but I mean, you think about how much heavy lifting has been done there. That's just crazy. Right, but let's take it a step further. How about if I try to remove this uh, softbox behind my friend Gezi's head. Well, I'm gonna go for the selection brush tool. I'll brush around the outside of it. Let's just see. Down there, around outside of Gezi's head, like so. On that little bit there, this would be a real challenge ordinarily. It really would. And there's also just a little bit on the outside of there. All right, let's give it a go. Let's click on remove and see what Photoshop can do to do for us in a very short space of time. When you think of the heavy lift, I mean, come on, that's not bad. But if that's not what the result you want, backtrack, so Command Z, and then try it again, remove. All very, very quick, 10 to 12 seconds roughly. I don't even think it was that. But, you know, you think about the work that's being done there, 
pretty damn impressive to go from that to that. Just a little bit of tidying up needed and you're good, good to go. But let's just try this one last image here where the person, again, unfortunately, it's my friend Anthony. He is the dominant person in this picture, taking up quite a lot. The reason I want to go and show these like big parts to remove is because if this technology can kind of work on the extremes, when really in our photography, we should be looking at removing smaller areas, we know it's going to have no problem whatsoever if it can do this. But let's have a look. So let's just try, first of all, the normal remove tool. Okay, remove tool. Let's just see what it does for us. So I'll trace around Anthony. Come down here, down to his boot, like so. Up here, under there. Don't include the other leg there for the uh, for the bench. Come up, round. I kind of know that this isn't going to work very well using the remove tool. Yeah, not good. Not good at all, so we'll forget that one. But let's go for the last time now. We'll use the selection brush tool. My preferred way to make selections like this. So again, I'll just trace around Anthony. Let's have a look here. Nice and quickly, very loose. When I think about the time we used to have to take to do this kind of stuff, this is just insane nowadays. It really is. And it's only going to get better. So let's have a look up here, bring it round. Just to there, side of his head. It'll fill it all in. And then let's click on the remove button. And what is a very short space of time, it'll remove him. Who knows what job it'll be like? Just, I mean, come on. Come on. That's pretty good. That is really, in fact, that's really good. Look, there's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. I was thinking that it might not be able to kind of think about building the leg back in here on the bench. So I was going to show you how to use vanishing point, which should be a very simple way to kind of clone this one over onto here. But it's done an amazing job just building it in straight away. So yeah, I mean, look at that. That's incredible. So yeah, just wanted to make you aware of it because it's, again, with all the updates that are coming in across all of the apps these days, thick and fast, it can be very easy to miss stuff and it can be very easy to see something there thinking, well, that says remove. That's kind of like the remove tool. Oh my God, it is totally not. It is very, very different technology, which has been updated. So my advice to you is if you are going to be removing stuff, use the button there because you're going to save yourself a ton of time because it's basically you telling Photoshop, look, I want you to remove this. Don't go putting other weird things in, just remove it. That's the way to go with the remove button. So there you go. Quick video for you. Give it a go if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next video.